Hey guys, how's everybody uh, this week? Good to see everybody again via this uh, mechanism. I can't wait till we actually get back to church and we can and we can see each other um, and we can greet each other with a hug and just uh, and, and and just get back to normal. But it's fantastic to hear the results and the things that are happening through our um, nation at the moment and the, the, the results, particularly in South Australia for us, is, is great. So hopefully it's sooner rather than later, but we've still got a few, a bit of time to go. And, and I think uh, you'll agree with me that our, our government is doing a great job in helping us work through um, this situation and, and making good, sound decisions for us at the moment. And so, you know, we, we just need to continue to support them, continue to pray for them. Um, I hope that we all come away from, from this period of time with some testimonies about um, things that, that God's been speaking to us about, things that God's been, been showing us. And look for, for this morning, just a, just a few words from, from, from me. And then actually John Shepherd's going to share a, a testimony which is going to be on the back of, of mine. So it's a bit of a joint thing together. And John's just got an amazing story to tell of, of something that God showed him. And uh, him and Mandy actually holidayed on the Ruby Princess back in November and God showed him something then and so he's going to share a little bit of that with us but um, you know during the last week um, I've listened to a lot of music it's something that I do all the time and I often find that God speaks to me through through musics and uh, and and those different things but um, last week on Easter Sunday in the morning I listened to a couple and in fact I put it on Facebook so some of you might have seen it who were singing some old songs um, some some good old fashioned hymns and some and some songs, but but uh, this couple, uh, Benny Bishop and his wife Vanessa, and uh, look, I don't know them at all, but I just thought it was amazing. Uh, I just loved their their singing. But Benny, um, one of the songs they sang was "Because He Lives," and uh, for some of the older guys in our church, we will remember the song. It's and it says, "Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow," um, and the words of the song say, "I know who holds the future." And, uh, and we know that it's Jesus who holds the future, who, who we have confidence because of him. And hearing that song um, took me back to remembering my, my dear old mum. Uh, mum taught me that song, I reckon, before I was 10 years old. And um, so it was just something that was really, really special to me. And it was something that she used to sing a fair bit, mum. And, um, and yeah, it's something that, that brought a lot of things home for me. And it was... It was it was really special, but it brought back the the key words that you know Jesus is the one who holds the future. He's the one who knows our future is in His hands, and so we have confidence because of Him, not because of us, not because of anything that we might do, but we have confidence because of Him. I want to share with you a couple couple of verses, and I want to um, share from Romans chapter eight. I'm just grabbing my my Bible here from Romans chapter eight. And from verse 34 through to around 37, and it says this. Uh, who is he that condemns Christ Jesus who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us? Uh, <clears throat> who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness? or danger, or sword. None of those can. Verse 36, as it is written, for your sake we will face death, and we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who, who loved us. And then verse 38 says this, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present the future, nor any powers, nor nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What an amazing bit of scripture for us to remember and hold in the forefront of our of our minds at this time. Just uh, my glasses are just fogging up a bit here. Um, for us to remember those things and to, and to see that. And, and in that little passage of scripture, there's eight, sorry, seven, seven things that can't separate us from the love of God. Seven things that can't separate us from God. There's trouble and we can be in troubled times, but God is still there. We can face hardship. And, and for some, we might be having some hardship and some different struggles with, with the isolation, with uh, not seeing people as often as we normally would. 
with persecution, famine, nakedness, or, or another way for, for nakedness is, you know, to when, when everything else gets stripped away, God is still there. Jesus is still there. Danger, and we can walk through dangerous times, but it doesn't change our relationship with God and it doesn't change his want for us and it shouldn't change our want for him, our, our desire to love him. And then it also talks about sword, which is battles. And, you know, there's times in our lives where we walk through battles, where we're actually in a battle. And, and, and it can be sometimes we're battling for stuff for our kids. Sometimes we're battling for stuff for, uh, for ourselves. Sometimes we're, we're battling through situations. And I'm talking about mental or spiritual battles that we work through. But, but God is the one who sees us through those things. We can face anything because of him, like that old song says. Because of him I can face tomorrow, I know who holds the future. Um, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 17 says, Jesus, he is before all things, and all things, and in him all things are held together. He is the one who holds everything together. Our future is in him. Jesus is he, he's the one who opens the future, not our circumstances. Our circumstances don't dictate our future. He's the one who dictates our future. Our attitude can change our future, but that's something that we can ask God to help us with and we can work through in those things. I'm just about to, to, to finish up and hand over to John, John Shepherd, but I just want to remind you of one scripture. In Revelation chapter 5, and I'm going to read from verses 1 to 5, but this scripture tells us that there was only one who was worthy to open the scroll that told the future of the world. And that one was Jesus. I'm going to read that passage of scripture. Uh, and it's from Revelation uh, chapter 5 and 1 to 5. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and I wept because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look inside. And verse 5, then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed and he's able to open the scroll and it's seven seals. Jesus was worthy to open the scroll. Jesus was worthy to tell the future. And Jesus is the one who holds our future in his hands. The same one, the same Jesus has our future. So we can face tomorrow with confidence because of him, because he has it all in his hands. So whatever it is that you might be going through right now, or maybe over this journey, over, over this period, you've had ups and downs, and, you know, mentally and through your thought patterns and some of those things, you've had ups and downs. I just want to encourage you to know that Jesus has it all in hand. He has the future in hand and we're just pressing to him. And I want to encourage everybody to, to, to read the word or to listen to, to people sharing positive um, stories, listen to music, the th whatever it is for you that helps you to press into God. Um, do that. Tim Goldney gave us a good little example the other day with his, with his different golf sticks and about this, the, the driver was the favourite, but all of those things make a difference to play the game. And for us, we've, we've got a favourite thing. Tap into that to move through, but don't neglect the other things. Uh, guys, uh, I want to say I hope, you do, hope you're doing well. I'm loving the fact we see lots of comments on Facebook. We see um, the different things coming through. I'm getting text messages of people who've watched stuff on YouTube. I really love the fact that we're sharing and we're moving together. Um, you know, Veachie's comment from a couple of weeks ago, um, we're physically distancing, but we're not socially distancing, and that's so important for us all. So um, I want to say love to everybody from, from, from Julie and I. Um, stay well, stay strong, press into him. Um, all the best, everybody, and we'll see you next week on the same spot. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Howdy everyone, how you going? Um, I thought I'd talk a bit about 
this coronavirus and what I think it's all about. It's supposed to be, I don't know when, but a, a move of God coming soon. And whenever God does something, say like there's an, a release of an anointing or something on someone's life, the devil sees that as, as well. He can see what's going on in the spiritual realm. And so I reckon what's going on with this coronavirus is that he's trying to attack the world and instill fear into everyone because a lot of people around the world are very fearful. Like when you're confronted with death, it's a scary thing, especially if you don't have a faith. And uh, the other thing is God can see what the devil's up to as well. And uh, so I think during this time, there's some things I've been thinking about, probably what we, we can do. And I think one thing is, because fear steals your faith, we need our faith built up. And one way of doing that is like listening to testimonies or there's heaps of stuff on the YouTube, there's teaching. Like the other day I just flicked over and I found... Um, he, he breaks the chains and it was a Hillsong song and this woman that was leading it she sang it with such gusto it was fantastic like there's power in the name of Jesus and so I stuck it in my phone and I was out working and I was just out in the yard and I was listening to it and I could really sense an anointing on that song and it lifted me up and uh, so there's all sorts of things we can do like that but one other thing is too I was thinking about is we need to get uh an understanding of who Jesus is and who God is. Um, he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I found this verse in Revelation. This is John's experience of Jesus. That's Revelation 1 verse 10. And he says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Now, Jesus must have really wanted to hear him to hear that if it was like a loud trumpet. Can you imagine a trumpet being blasted behind you? And he goes on to say in, in verse 14, to describe Jesus, what John's describing Jesus, he says, His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like the flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as of the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth, out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and in his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And John says in verse 17, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and last. He had a pretty scary encounter of Jesus. And I reckon, because we always talk of like God is love, he loves us. But we never talk about as Jesus being the judge. And it's a bit of a scary thing. And I think this is how John saw Jesus. Because in Corinthians it says, Corinthians 5 verse 10 says, For we must all, be, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. So Jesus is judge, and I think that's what John experienced. And if we know that, that can give us more comfort. I uh, shared with the church just before Christmas about a dream I had. And that dream was in the middle of November, just about the time when the coronavirus broke out in China. And, you know, there's that boat, there's been all this trouble on the Ruby Princess and a lot of people die, have died and got sick and all that. Well, this is where I had the dream. Mandy and I were on the Ruby Princess. And when I was thinking about that the other day, I was thinking, I think God was trying to tell me something out of that. Like that he's God and not to be afraid. And I know exactly what's going on. And uh, the dream was... That I was standing there and this huge line just roared in my face. And it scared the pants off me. But it's interesting because a few weeks after that, 
pray or say, put out a prophetic word to say, the Lion of the tribe of Judah is roaring over South Australia. And I heard just a couple of weeks ago that lots of intercessors around the state have been getting the same word about the lion roaring. But Jesus is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And I reckon what he's roaring was, he was making an announcement to say, hey, I'm here and I'm not some pathetic little king. I am the mighty Lord God. So I hope that's encouraging. (laughs) But then in Revelation 17, uh, getting back to what John's experience was, it says, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. He laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the, the keys to Hades and death. Like Jesus saw him as, as the judge and he also saw him as the saviour. Jesus is the total victor over all forms of evil. He went through the cross, he went through death, he went through sin, Hades and the devil and emerged victorious. He always was the victor and he didn't do this for himself. He did it for you and me to deal with our sin and get us back into a right relationship with God. Now that is grace and mercy. And that's where God's focus is. It's on his church. The Bible tells us that. And we need to understand that we come first on his list of concerns. And if you don't understand that, then you'll be easily frightened. So I I believe it's important for us to get closer to Jesus and ask him for an understanding, to, to know what's in his word, and uh, if you say, oh, I can't get close to Jesus or I don't know what's his, well, I'm, I'm not hungry for the Bible, it's boring or I find it hard to read, then keep on asking Jesus. Keep on talking. Well, the Bible says, cast all your cares on him. It tells us to be anxious for nothing. Now, that's easier said than done. And I know in my own life, I've been stressed to the max sometimes, but I've found that if you tell him all about it, and ask him, like, give me a hunger for you, Jesus. Give me a hunger for your word. You keep asking it and keep asking it and keep asking it until you get it. And always when the strife and trouble comes, the first thing we really need to do as, as believers is to come into repentance. If we deal with sin in our life, then we can um, come to Jesus in repentance. It, it helps us to get closer to him. And like, I was thinking about repentance and I, and I think repentance is really God's grace and mercy. Because look, as we were talking about in Revelations, Jesus is the judge. And I think what he does, if we come to him in repentance, we're actually judging ourselves, and we don't get Jesus to judge us. And so that's grace and mercy. So the other thing I think we need to do is we keep on praying for Australia, pray for our leaders, Pray for friends and family. Always pray protection. And um, just keep hanging in there. I just want to pray for you before I finish. Father God, I thank you for uh, the Lighthouse Church and all the people in it. And I pray that you um, touch them, Lord, and give them your peace. Give them an understanding of who you are, Jesus. I pray your protection over them and their families. And I ask you to send your angels of protection to be over us all. And Lord, for anyone who's watching who's not from the lighthouse, I pray your protection over them as well. And uh, touch them, Lord, and keep them safe. And Lord, I pray for our Prime Minister and all the people making decisions. I pray you, you give them wisdom so that they can guide and lead us. And Lord, we pray for... Um, a cure for this uh, virus, that you uh, give people somewhere over the pl- in the planet the, the, the tools and the insight as, and dreams and visions, Lord, of what they need to do to, to create a virus, uh, an um, antidote to counteract this virus. So we thank you for all you're doing for us, Lord. We thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do. 
And we give you all the praise and the glory, Jesus. In, your, in Jesus' name, amen.